Hey, so today is November 10th. It is a Friday, 2023, and it is Veterans Day. So because um, Hadid is a veteran, um, we, well actually he, I guess anybody who works for the government, which he works for the government, then you have the day off or the state. So it is a paid holiday off. And he is a veteran, so um, we celebrated him today, kind of, not really. Um, he doesn't like being celebrated, or he's not, how about this? He is not the kind of person who feels like he needs to be celebrated. Even on his birthday, he's just super low-key, and it's really, it's not a big deal. Um, holidays is the same way, too. Hadid is very very humble very humble um it's one of the things it's one of the attributes that i love um about hadid your stepfather um so today we went and well this morning we kind of took it easy took a it took our time and then we um i'm gonna move around a bit because i feel like i've been staying the same place plus here you can kind of see the water view. There we go. So, um, and I can rest my my arm <laughs> on this. There's a, a rail. Yeah. Anyways, there is a railing right there. So, um, we went and we looked at a couple of houses um, at a nearby lake north of here. And it was really cool. So the memory that I have, real quick, um, is golfing. Um, Warren, you learned how to golf, and you were taking golf lessons. And I just had got done going through some pictures, and then we went to a home today that was on a lake and a golf course. So it made me think about those memories and. Um, you were good. Warren, you were really good at golf, even though you hardly, I think we did maybe one or two summers of golf lessons. I can't remember. Oh, and you can see I'm wearing a coat. It's actually cold today. But um, Warren, yeah, you you were able to, able to take some golf lessons and you were actually on a golf team, um, I think the second or third year. So maybe you took lessons two years and then the third year we did like you were on a team, um, which was like a, a recreational team. And I, I really enjoyed watching you play golf, um, considering my dad was a fanatic and my mom and dad had built a home on a golf course, so it was kind of their life. Your grandfather, um, Grandpa Sojourno. So that was kind of special to see that you got involved in golf and that you were good at it. Um, you're actually really good considering your age and considering we started you older than most of the other kids on your golf team um and then clara we bought you some golf clubs too or you used warren's old ones i can't remember that you were never able to um do the lessons not that i can remember and you weren't able to be on a non-record or on a recreational team but you did enjoy it. Um, I think you're more of a team sport kind of girl, um, but I also think that you are excellent at any sport, anything you do. You are so talented. Both of you guys are so very, very talented and well coordinated. So um, that is, to me, that is extremely special to know that, um, I don't know, and Wyatt, and I, and I want to see that because if Wyatt watches these videos, I don't want him to, him to think that he wasn't athletic because I believe that given, if he would have been given the opportunity to be more athletic in other areas, not just baseball, that um, Brian had put you in, which um, you were not favorable of that. And I think there were some extra reasons to why that was not one of your things or one of your sports. Um, but Wyatt, you were fantastic at swimming. You were such a really good, you were such an excellent swimmer, just like Warren is taking after you. So 
I do believe athletically that even Wyatt, you um, you were very athletic. You golfed. I put you in golf lessons um, even before I met Brian. I put you in golf lessons because of my dad, and I know how important it was for me. Um, why I remember you golfed with my dad. You golfed with Grandpa Soderno before he passed on to go to heaven. Um, but all three of you guys are very talented and um, very athletic. And I'm very blessed. Very, very blessed. Um, not that that is important because it's not at all important. My husband, he's not so much, or at least he doesn't think, Hadid, he doesn't think that he's athletic. I actually do think that if he was given the opportunity, that he would be as well. So, um, but um, anyway, so that was the memory that I had today of was of golfing. Um, it came up because one of the houses that we went to look at, actually both of the houses are on a golf course and they are on a lake. So it's really cool because... Um, one of them was like literally on the water, so you could push off your boat, you could do pontoon boats on this lake, paddleboard, kayak, whatever, um, and it was literally on the lake. Um, it wasn't as big as the second home. The second home was about five, 600 square, I think it was about 600 square feet bigger, um, more open, more laid out. The first home was custom home, beautiful home. Um, but a little more, well, it felt small. And then the second one is very open. It was actually also a custom home and, um, beautiful. And it also has a water view, but it wasn't right on the water. <clears throat> so it was across the street and, um, it would be off of the front patio. The driveway, it was cool that at the second home, the driveway was actually a circle driveway. So it was a round driveway that you pull in um, and can drive all the way through to the other side. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, trying to think of anything else special about it. The second home, um, every bedroom, including the master, was an ensuite, meaning every bedroom had its own bathroom, which was really cool. Um, and it was a nice bathroom and a walk-in closet so it was kind of special for each each room so warren and claire you guys would each have your own bathroom um and we'd be right there on the lake and golf course and it has an olympic size swimming pool um it was just a perfectly i mean the entire area was awesome it was so beautiful with these tall super super tall mature trees in the neighborhood so that was um, that was really cool. It was something that was it, it's kind of important to me. I don't necessarily want to be in a neighborhood that has homes stacked on each other like dominoes, um, and I don't really want to see. So I don't like the the homes that are close together. I would deal with it if it had like water access, which one of them did, but I'd prefer and it had trees all around. But I definitely like the open life, and I think that's because the home that you guys grew up in when you were younger, it was on three quarters of an acre, um, and we didn't have neighbors super close to us. So that's kind of something I really um, cherish. I like having that open space, but yeah, I love having a community where we can be together and get together with friends in the neighborhood although we didn't necessarily do that as often um the one on um barley corn in bend oregon so um let's see here what else that's about it for the day i'm keeping this video under 10 minutes that's awesome that is so awesome um well it's at nine and a half so maybe not but I just want to remind you guys how amazing you are, that you're overcomers, um, and despite our situation, God sees you. God knows you. Again, I want to remind you that there is nothing that I'm doing or not doing to keep myself from you guys. Um, I have done and I continue to do everything that I can to be in contact with you. 
Um, I am not your, I have tried to contact you even on your birthdays, even just to say happy birthday um, and have your dad on the other line so he could quote unquote supervise. I'm sorry, your biological dad um, on the other line um, so that he could supervise the call and he hasn't even allowed me to call you guys to wish you a happy birthday. Um, but I want you guys to know I have done everything that I can. I send you guys letters and presents and, um, and I'm keeping track of all of this stuff. I'm continuing to um, seek the courts um, for justice and I will continue to do that. Um, unless um, the Lord tells me otherwise, the appeal um, that was filed in February of last year of 2022, that is moving forward. Although I see that there is, yeah, there's some movement. I'm not going to get into the details. Um, at some point, I probably will. But um, that is still in the courts and nobody has won and no one has lost and I'm still appealing um, for quite a few reasons so most importantly justice and I'm praying I'm praying that there is a turn of hearts I'm praying for repentance because that's the biggest thing a repentant heart and it's not just for me it's not so that Warren and Claire you guys can come back to me and be with me but it is it. It is an eternal salvation thing. This is not, this is temporary. This earth, this world is completely temporary. But what happens in this world then places an emphasis on what eternity is and where people go for eternity. And um, so that's what I'm praying for. Um, yeah. So I am so grateful, I'm so faithful and trusting and believing God in all of this. Um, I'm continuing to give it to him. A lot of people reference, oh, God's in control. No, God is only in control when we give it to him. And it's something I have to do on a continual basis every single day. Um, and I have to pray and seek his direction every single day. Because what may have been right yesterday may not be the same today. So I just want you guys to know that. Um, I love you. I post, by the way, I'm on social media. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. And I am also on Instagram. Um, YouTube, obviously. And um, I just want you guys to know I love you. And I miss you. And um, let me see here. I'm going to, I am going to read a couple scriptures over you. So according to Romans 8, let's see if I can read this. Um, according to Romans 8 verse 35, Warren and Clara and Wyatt, you guys are more than conquerors, according to the Word of God. And according to Psalms 8, verse 6, all circumstances are under your feet. Now, I do want to emphasize, if you place them under your feet, if you choose to hold on to them and stuff them in your heart or be resentful about something or you choose to hold on to it and hide it away somewhere and not put it under your feet, then it won't be under your feet. But according to the word of God in Psalms 8 verse 6, if you place them under your feet, then all circumstances will be under your feet. And you just have to declare and decree it. The enemy may make you feel and think that they aren't and that you have no control over your circumstances or your situation. But mentally, in your mind, you do. You may not physically, but you do mentally and emotionally. So I just want to remind you of that, that you are, um, 
that all circumstances are under your feet if you choose to allow the Lord to place them there, or if you do. Um, also, according to Romans 8, verse 37, in all things, we gain a surpassing victory. Now, you may not feel like it right now, because the enemy will make you think, well, yeah, you're not in a victory. You can't even see your mom. You can't even talk to your mom. But you need to remember, it's all a perspective. It's all of what you think or what you say. And so if you can declare to yourself, Lord Jesus, I, in all things, I gain a surpassing victory. Just keep saying that. And God is going to come through, I promise you. He's going to come through. And then the verse continues in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. And in all things, God leads me to triumph in Christ. So you are triumphing in Christ Jesus. Not on your own. Not on your own works. But if you give it to Jesus and just say, Jesus, you got this. I don't feel like I'm triumphing. I don't feel like I have a victory. But I believe that you will do what you say you're going to do. And I'm going to have victory. So I'm going to start claiming it now. A lot of people don't want to do it. They think they're lying to themselves. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Just claim it. Claim it. Lord Jesus, I am declaring a victory. Because you already won this. Um, and then, through my union with God, I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And that's in Ephesians 6 verse 10. I'm sure a lot of all of the, a lot of these that I'm reading to you, they sound familiar possibly because I've read them over you at bedtime. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to end the last one. I'm just going to speak, speak this over you. Warren and Clara and Wyatt, you have strength for all things in Christ who empowers you. You are ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner healing and inner strength into you. Warren and Clara and Wyatt, you are self-sufficient in Christ. Self-sufficient in Christ. That's in Jesus Christ. Sufficiency. So Warren and Clara and Wyatt, you are self-sufficient in Jesus Christ. Sufficiency. Because he is sufficient. He already paid the price. He already did everything that he needed to. And then when he got done doing it on the cross, he gave the victory to you. So you're like holding the winning trophy. And you have two choices. You have a choice to claim it, hold on to the trophy, and say this is mine. Because Jesus gave it to me. Or the second choice is you give it to the enemy. And you tell them they won. Well, that's not cool because we know they didn't win. The enemy did not win. They were defeated. Jesus Christ defeated them. So keep that in mind. It is this battle. It isn't just as it says in Ephesians 6. This battle is not against flesh and blood. It is against. It's not against Brian. It's not against his family. It's not against the courts. It's not against the attorneys. It's not against my family. Who has testified against me. It's not my battle. It's not against people. It's against the princes and the principalities of the air. That is the unseen realm. So that is literally like angels fighting against demons. Or angels fighting against fallen angels. Because heaven or because God kicked out a third of the angels. So they all fell with Satan. So... You have your fallen angels fighting against God's angels. We have two-thirds angels up against theirs. And we have the Holy Spirit. We have so many things. They're, they're, they're not going to win. No matter what uh, these secret societies think and say, they're not going to win. I've seen the end of the book. I've seen and I've read the, the Bible. Um, I know that God wins. God created them. He could wipe them out in a second. Why he doesn't do it, it's because of free will. It's because of his own laws that he put into place. But they'll never win. So, I just want you to remember that. Um, 
everything you guys put your hands to, you will prosper. And I pray that over you and I speak that over you. Everything that you put your hands to will prosper. I just thank you so much, Father God, um, for Warren and Clara. I thank you for gifting me, them, that I get to be their mom. <laughs> that I thank you for giving me the strength and the sufficiency in Jesus Christ to do this. <sighs> thank you, Lord, for my kids. Thank you for your head of protection. Um, the spirit of the living God that is upon them. Thank you for showing them your ways and for building their strength and their identity and their authority as a child of God. And thank you, Lord, for continuing to pour in hope. Increase their hope in the Lord, their hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, not the hope in this world, not even the hope in me, God but their hope in Jesus Christ to know that you will make all things new. I thank you for that, Lord, including my relationship with them and that it will be redeemed. My whole family, my kids. Lord, I thank you for Warren and Claire, and I thank you for building their strength, their courage, their perseverance. Lord, thank you that you are showing them how to persevere until the very end and to never stop, never quit, and never give up. I thank you, Father God. In your heavenly name, Jesus Christ, amen. I love you, Warren and Clara. I miss you guys so much. So much. I love you. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. I love you.